So, um, you know, as you guys seen, Mike Hoyt um, last week and the last couple of weeks actually uh, getting acclimated to that position. We've been able to see Kier Thomas get activated. And then last year, our young rook came back up, you know, off the injury and stuff and was able to play for us. Um, probably going to this week, he wouldn't have been active. And what Sean says, he really means, man. Like, he's people first. So in order to give Terrell the best chance to get back on the grass, you know, they decide to part. We decide to part ways and let him move on and have an opportunity somewhere else where it was probably going to be more fruitful for him. So, like, you know, these young guys are coming at playing. You know, we've done some really good things the last couple of weeks. And in order not to have a disgruntled worker, um, you know, Sean really means what he says. And um, it's people first. And he decided to let him go, give him an opportunity to go play somewhere else and move on. So you're thinking um, that won't be a case where he comes back to the practice squad or anything like that? You know, I never say that. You never yeah. rule out a guy, you know, but definitely give a person a chance to go explore um, on what they can do um, and how they can affect them, uh, their careers and get a chance to see where they are and get some uh, clarity there. So, like, I'm never going to say we won't bring a guy back. It was nothing disgruntled. We, oh, we hate you, T. Lou. No, it wasn't that way. It was um, It was the due diligence of Sean when he tells you where people first business. He absolutely means it, and I think that's a lot of credit to him. When, just when, to clarify, you said he would not have been active this week? No. No. Um, our young guys that played last week, um, having the opportunity to get those guys out there and play was exciting. Um, watching those guys get better and mature. And um, um, I wouldn't say he wouldn't have been eligible, but like looking at it, the likelihood of him being up uh, would have been a little bit lower than it has been in the past, if that makes sense. Yeah. When you're going against Aaron Rodgers, how much of it, obviously, you can give his physical gifts, but oh, yeah. his mental gifts, what stands out to you about that? That's the biggest problem. Um, Aaron Rodgers is one of the most, uh, the best um, above the neck players in the game. You know, um, just ask Aaron. He's the smartest guy in the room at all times. Right? And I can joke with him that way because I love Aaron. And like, I think he's, he is probably the smartest guy in the room at all times. But he is gifted. He's talented. Um, I've never been around a guy that has more moxie, that has more control of a game um, than Aaron. Uh, he's able to communicate with his team, his team, the other team. Um, I never forget. I told you this guy's story last year, but man, that throw he made on third down against us when I was in Tampa and I was the head coach and he was able to drift to my sideline and say, hey, that was a good call, coach. You know, just those kind of things. And uh, he, he is the best, you know, one of the best. You know, there's a couple that we know we played and we've been around them with Tom and him, but those guys are like, you know, they're rare, they're unique. You know, they are the best in our game. And uh, he's certainly that. Um, Raheem, you've been in it a long time and I know you're talking about how Sean's like people first, but at what point in your career, coaching career, did the cold reality, you know, the cold business decisions like Ter Terrell Lewis, did you kind of, you know, recognize that and able to deal with it? That this, this is a cold production-based business. You know, um, I wouldn't call it cold because we all signed up for it. You know, um, it's what we do. You know, like it's like when you get judged, you know, like it's like hey, you're being judged by the very best, right? We're at an elite level, and the expectations become elite. Um, the stories you guys write become more difficult to write about people that you care about, you love, but you got to be honest, right? And you got to be able to tell that reality, and that whatever that brutal reality is on what we do, whether it be decisions on personnel, whether it be decisions in the game plan, whether it be decisions about how we played and how honest we got to be with whoever, I think those things just come with the territory. You never become numb to them. Uh, when you become numb to them, it's probably time for you to leave. Um, but those things are our reality those things are your reality those things are the stuff we have to do Gary I'm sure at this point in your career you go home you're like man I don't want to write this bad article about Raheem Morris he's such a good guy but they did play terrible on defense yesterday you know like uh, that's just part of the business it's the same thing with cutting the players the same thing with moving on from players the same thing with benching a guy it's the same thing with decisions on how a guy played the same thing on, on going through those hardcore truthful evaluations on how you got to talk about to a guy the next day when he didn't play as well as you had hoped or expected him to play. So those things are what we do, and it is what it is, and uh, I appreciate that question. Speaking of, uh, speaking of being numb. Kurt, you were late. You go first. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, just a joke. Um, speaking of being numb, uh, it's the coldest game you've ever played. In. <laughs> I don't know that. Um, somebody just got asked that question uh, this morning, to be honest with you, but I, I don't know. Um, as a coach, as a player, I don't think you – Think about those things. I think that's more fun for, you know, the media life that we have. 
I think that's more fun for, you know, statistical things that come up later. Like, hey, that was the coldest game ever played in the National Football League. Oh, that was cool. Did we win? You know, like, um, I don't know that. I mean, I know it was pretty cold in the NFC Championship game versus Philly. Um, we played them in Tampa. I know it was a pretty cold game. Last year in Tampa, it was freezing, believe it or not. I know you guys were there. But um, uh, we'll see in Green Bay. You know, been to Green Bay a couple of times. It's been cold. Um, it's been warm. Um, but Aaron Rodgers still going to be back then. It doesn't really matter. Opposite Leonard this season. Um, what, what has sort of been the issue there in terms of not clearly not getting specifically what your vision was? You know, winning. You know, um, if our records were different or if those things had happened, I don't know if you get them released at the same time. You know, that means they would have probably been more productive. Uh, we probably would have had more uh, statistical line to, to vary on keeping those things and keeping those things moving in that direction. But um, those things are always made based on winning. And, you know, when you're not winning, you're not getting the production that you would like to have or to be able to fill some of those shoes you were trying to fill. And, and it's a hard shoe to fill. You know, Vaughn Miller is special. And be able to go out there and do some of the things that Vaughn was able to do for us last year, even being in a two-man role or a three-man role or whatever case you want to be, those things are difficult. You know, Hollins has moved on. He's with Green Bay, and he's playing well, played well in his first game, was able to do some production, and hopefully Terrell Lewis is able to do the same. So did you guys? Oh, that's good. Yeah, I mean, you said winning. Are you just saying, are you more indicating opportunities to rush the passer or? Well, I mean, it's about sometimes opportunities to rush the passer. Sometimes it's about um, how the game is dictated and how they're able to play and how they're able to do those things. But it's a production-based business like we talked about at the beginning of this conference. And I think those are the things that, that, that makes the decisions and decisions to move on and decisions to not have those people here anymore. And those decisions that will always be made on everything, you know, like winning. You know, like it doesn't really matter. That's why I kind of say stats are for losers. It's more about winning than, than, as opposed to what general stats say or what people say. You know, like if we're doing the things that we need to do from a winning standpoint, you know, things may be different. So did you guys miscalculate their ability to fill that role? You know, when you talk about miscalculations, um, I think you got to just talk about the entirety of it all. You know, um, did I put them in good enough positions first and foremost me talking about myself? Um, did I give them the best opportunity to be successful? Talk about me first and foremost. And then we could talk about everything else and everything else in decision making that goes into the process of calculating how to fill it. Um, I think we knew it was going to be difficult to, 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 to replace Vaughn. Um, hence our uh, intent and our desire to sign Vaughn and our um, willingness to go to another level to design Vaughn. And we got outbid, and it, it is what it is, right? That's the shakeup of our business. So I, would, I wouldn't say or blame anybody that um, we didn't go get Vaughn. Less, man, we should just punch him. No, it's just it's the business. It's the nature of the beast. It is what it is. Sure. They're attacking his side of the field uh, in the running game. But he kind of made some adjustments, came back, some big plays. But what did you see from him in that game particularly? I wouldn't even say attacking in the run game. He got some obscure reverses. Josh did a great job, man, of implementing some reverses that you're like, all right, you're going to do it once. He won't do it again. And uh, did a nice job of – taking advantage of manipulation to the edge, had a chance to do some of those things. And uh, some of those plays could have played out a little bit differently, but I'm very pleased with Hoyt and how he's grown just in all his abilities to go out there and win. You know, the first time he went out there and able to touch the quarterback and get two sacks, and we were talking about just never even getting close to a quarterback at that point. Last week, making a big-time pressure at the end of the game that caused that big-time interception, or I shouldn't say cause, was a part of it. Um, and his ability to be active are just exciting. It's ecstatic, the ups and downs, the – the ability to coach those kind of players and make them grow is what keeps me going, right? Bobby Brown's the excitement of that, you know, young Kobe Durant, you know, getting DK back out there when the time permits. Uh, just those young guys and finding out what their role is going to be moving forward and getting things right for us, I think are the most important things for us to do. Um, this has to be kind of in the letter of invention sometimes and with the Hoyt situation. Um, and you can correct me on this if I'm wrong, but he sometimes doesn't seem like he's built – like a prototypical pure pass rusher. Sure. So how do you, I mean, it's clear you see him as someone who could do that. You Maybe know, uh, that full time for you guys? So, Jordan, it's, it's kind of funny, you know, like Hoyt came in as a D lineman, as you guys know. Like he was, you know, Aaron Donald's backup, you know, somebody you can get in there and get some juice. Potentially um, the guy that can go in there and some pass downs and rush with Aaron Donald, right? And he had the ability to do that, but Greg Gaines came along, did a really good job for us. Before that, we had Sebastian J. Dosa doing that, did a really good job for us. And then you had a guy like A. Sean around here that could do some things like that for you. So he kind of was the 
the man out, so to speak. And then he found his role on special teams because he can run. And he found his role and he found this thing, this, this compliment that just made him um, expendable or, excuse me, unexpendable, whatever the case, whatever the word is, you guys write the right one, <laughs> right? Made him the, uh, not be able to get rid of that way. And he was able to be up every single week. So the next thing we know, we go out there and say, hey, this guy's athletic enough. Let's try him out there. Let's get some, uh, get, give him a chance to set the edge. We know he can do that. We know he can play physical with his hands. Um, give him an opportunity to pass rush. We see what that result looked like. And, and now you're talking about a guy that potentially uh, could change his body type because he has that type of mentality. You know, he can change what he wants to be as far as what's needed from his team. And, like, we know he's not selfish by any means. Um, and we know he'll do whatever it is and whatever it takes to win. So, like, um, he's just the type of guy that, that we like to be around and like the guy that, that you want to work with and, and, and keep moving forward with him. Greg was outstanding last week. Um, I think he got a game ball um, in our team meeting from Sean. I think uh, his leadership, I think his sarcastic way of being um, his best version of himself for us is great for me. Um, I love Greg, man. It's like everything about him. Um, he's tough. Um, he's uh, oftentimes looked past. Um, but a lot of times he's the meat and potatoes of what we do. He's, uh, he's the thinker in that front line right now, with Aaron being out particularly. Um, even though even when Aaron's in, he could still be that guy. And like um, the push that he provides for Aaron and the push they provide for each other, um, I think is absolutely healthy. I think what he's done with his young guys and absolutely scoring those guys with sarcasm to absolutely own it with the young Bobbies and some of the people that he plays around. Um, he's outstanding, man. He's, uh, he's fun to be around. Um, I can't say enough good things about great games. You know, he's got that personality that just is infectious and like, he's awesome. Deuces. Thanks. Five minutes early and gave you five minutes extra. <laughs> Three minutes.
we win and there's no food? <laughs> How does that even make sense? I get it. You know what? I understand that. I'm, with, I'm in it with you. Um, what's up, guys? So, Liam, what was last week like for you as, as far as working with Zach and Baker and yeah. trying to get Baker up to speed the first inning? <laughs> it's like, you know, cramming for an exam, essentially, right? He gets, on, he gets in the building. We went until about 11.30 that night. Um, you know, he was able to get to the hotel, get a couple hours of sleep, hit it back in the, you know, first thing in the morning, you know, with another cram session. And we were also cramming to get information into our other players as well. So because of the short week. So um, kind of went throughout that day. We kept them a little bit longer after the day and ended up going until about 6, 5.30, 6 o'clock on Wednesday. And, um, you know, Wednesday night, we went down to the hotel, got a little bit more work in. Thursday morning, same thing. So it was really um, never ending, you know, for that you know amount of time, and which was great. He was un- he was unbelievable. He was on the screws, and you know everybody did a really nice job collaborating to get that thing done. Uh, Liam, uh, Sean mentioned they were considering back to Kentucky and taking the OC job there. Any update on that? No update right now. I'm just you know biggest thing is focusing on the season. You know if that that's the conversation that I'll end up having with those guys at the end of the season. And uh, the biggest thing is just trying to do right by this place and, and finish the season off in the right way. Um, and really, just that's the main focus is getting Baker going, getting these guys ready, and and being there for these guys. So something like that, when something like that comes out, how do you the players close to it? How do you- Probably one or two guys hit me up about it. They they know that you know, there's always things that that come out, and whether it's you know I ended up doing that or not. At the end of the day, these guys are professionals. They they know the deal, and um, you know addressed it with a few guys that it, you know felt like we needed to address it with. And um, everybody's really respectful of these kind of situations in this building. So uh, everybody's been nothing but supportive. It's a great question because earlier in the week we're like, all right, well, we had a few days off. What do we really want to dive into when we didn't have a game plan yet for Green Bay? You don't want to start teaching them formations, motions, and you know different things that we're not even going to use but might be part of our core offensive philosophy. So there was definitely a balancing act in terms of some of the things that we wanted to get him taught and learn. Um, you know, which we were able to do with some just core concepts that we carry every week, more of the plays, less the uh, formations, motions, information that might be a little bit too, um, you know, detailed for what he really needs to know. Um, so then we got a really good jump start on these guys with the extra days, and he was able to get the base plan in, you know, a day early. And um, he did a great job studying over the last few days. He was in here uh, every morning at 6 a.m. Uh, and was here pretty late every night, too. So the night that we were, you know, game planning, he's staying right here at the Four Seasons or whatever it is. He's staying in town, and uh, he was with us till about 8, 8.30, you know, 8.30 at night, just kind of working on some things. So uh, dedication is real. Are there, are there things you can do with him that you that you can't do with Matthew Stafford? I don't, you know, I wouldn't say that. It, it's different players, but very similar in terms of the, you know, in some of the arm talent, the way they can push the ball down the field, the strengths of their game in terms of just being able to throw the football, um, you know, accurately with, you know, with some velocity. Uh, you saw some of the throws he obviously made against uh, the Raiders were extremely accurate in some instances. And um, different players with like size, stature, things of that nature, but there's a reason why we went and got him. We felt good about some of the things that he could do in within our system and then things that he's done well within his career that we can implement and be able to do for the next four weeks uh, to try to win as many football games as possible. When you're teaching a quarterback to this offense, regardless of their experience level, how much of, I guess, a benefit is it to have the uh, familiar, familiarity like Baker had with the protection scheme? It's big because it it's, it cuts out so much learning and teaching, especially that that learning and teaching isn't a huddle call, really. It's not something that occurs pre, like it's something that's on the line of scrimmage, happening fast, adjustments, communication, things like that that are really difficult. And, um, you know, we've had protection issues on the season because of the inconsistencies in different players playing. And you guys see how that kind of affects the game when you have your quarterback truly understand some of the protection systems, communication, language, identifying things. It really helps out just really getting the play started. Yeah, it did. 
Well, we had a whole wristband, didn't really end up start, you know, using a ton of that for him, and he did a great – Sean did a really nice job communicating things you know, into the headset, and, and Baker did a great job uh, really kind of digesting that information, visualizing it, and then also being able to regurgitate and execute that information. So uh, we were definitely on the sidelines with the call sheet um, teaching and coaching and, and uh, on the fly. So, um, you know, it, it's it's crazy. You say before the game, you're sitting in, in, in Sean's office, and you say, well, man, obviously you go into every game expecting and hoping to win. We say, well, we win this game. It's probably – you know, probably going to be a miracle in a lot of ways if we end up going that route and if, you know, Baker has to end up playing. And we really wanted to take positives. All right, hey, how many things can we grow from here? How many things can we take from to grow for the next four weeks and be able to, you know, move forward? Uh, and, and one of those things happens, and it was pretty cool. How is John Colbert doing A little stiff, you know, a little sore. Um, that's something that uh, at the end of the day is oh, it just gonna, it needs rest. It needs some time to heal. When you continue to get you know, hit on it and stingers and things like that, um, you, know, you, you just don't want to continue to mask anything or put them in a position to uh, not be successful. We want to always put our guys in a position to, to, uh, to, to be successful, and um, you really just, you know, it just needs a little bit of time to get this thing healed up. You know, he was throwing it pretty good, you know, solid enough in pregame, but um, we knew the limitations, some of his limitations, and if he, you know, did get hit, if he had to move off his spot and make some different throws, um, he's a tough dude, man. Like, he, he, he had every intention of trying to make it go, but at the end of the day, I think he knew and we knew that, you know, with the volatility, those good rush ends that they had, uh, where were we putting John and our offense and our team in the best possible way to be successful? And uh, we all came to the conclusion that that was the right decision to make, and um, you know everybody's on board from there. Ah, uh, no, you know that was more. Uh, we wanted to give John that. You know, I mean, he competed his tail off against Seattle through injury, gave us a chance to win that game. Uh, really couldn't practice much throughout the week because he was really working on that deal in terms of the rehab. Um, some of the medic meds helped him a little bit pregame, but um, you know we wanted to you know start John, let bigger you know let him see the game. How were they coming out to defend us, which was actually very different from how they defended us on the first drive of the game versus the rest of the game. So there were some things that we wanted to see before we you know put Baker in that situation, but we also wanted to give John the chance to, to you know take a look at it. You've seen all of the on-field stuff, the being fired up, the headbutts, like all yeah. of that. Yeah. You guys are seeing Baker's personality, the personality we totally. don't see. Right. How would you describe his personality in that space? Um, you know, confidently professional. I mean, he, he carries himself the way that you'd want your quarterback to carry himself in a lot of ways. Um, you know, there's no question that he was able to elevate some of his teammates throughout the game, throughout practice, things of that nature. Uh, but also his dedication to this process. Um, his notes, like I, I've mentioned, are just extremely detailed, highlighters, color coding, um, you know, really on the screws in terms of the dedication, the time that it takes to prepare to go win a football game in the National Football League. So from all that standpoint, it's been great. When, when, so going into that game, you're not going to start them. You go through this crazy 48-hour onboarding. I'm curious, when you walked out of the building that night, were you like what the H-E double hockey stick happened? Or when did you kind of realize, or was it in the moment? It was, it was in the moment. It was very much in the moment of emotion. I mean, it was in, we, we went 98 yards, no timeouts. The way that that whole thing played out, the guys that stepped up and made plays, you just had a lot of joy in feeling that, yes, we won. That was great to get a win that we haven't felt in a long time. But it was the way that we did it, the way that it happened, the – the, the sincere joy that you felt for the guys that were making plays in that game. Um, that was a lot of emotion. You know, it's a lot of emotion. That's why you coach. It's not truly to win. It's the process in which how it happens. And you see guys elevate their game, be able to make plays, have confidence. I mean, you know, I don't know how many three and 19. I mean, there was a strong belief on that sideline throughout the entire game. And you saw it in the guys play. Um, in terms of elevating play, <clears throat> fan, fan, 2-2 two, two, with 
Cooper and Allen out seem like they've really taken advantage of the Yeah, it's opportunity. I mean, big time opportunity for those guys to step up and they have. I mean, there's there's things every week that we're able to work on and coach off of. That's the beauty of this. We have young guys that are playing, they're growing, they're learning, and they're developing. And that's only going to serve serve us better for the future. So these guys are getting great opportunities. They're making the most of it. They're making plays. They're still learning, and that's the beauty of practice. We have so much more practice. Normally around this time, we would really start to shut things down from a rep standpoint and things like that, maybe do more jog through, walk through. we got a lot of young guys playing with a new quarterback. We're able to practice, and that helps get these guys better and a little bit more continuity and chemistry, which is great. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.